Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy, AKA That Spanish Teacher, here to help you work smarter, not harder in the classroom because you work hard enough already. I'm back with another teacher tech tutorial. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And today, this is how you can play GimKit in the new version of Among Us, okay? On here, it is called Trust No One, but if you haven't already heard from it from your kids talking about it a million miles a minute like mine are, Among Us is a new game that is very popular with students and GimKit has made a version that you can play with your kids, which is super fun, super engaging, perfect for remote learning, perfect for hybrid, perfect for in-class. It is all around awesome, and it's going to get your kids engaged, talking, excited about whatever topic you are doing. If you haven't already done so, and you don't already know how to use GimKit, go ahead and check out my tutorial that is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to actually create and play a normal game kit. That's going to be really valuable for you to know exactly how to get the game going. This is only going to show you how to play this version of the game. So if you don't know how to set it all up, this is going to be a little bit confusing for you. But if you've already watched that, come on back here and then you can figure out how to play this version. So I'm in my kits right now. And so you can see over here, I'm going to click the play live button. And that's what you play anytime you're ready to do a game kit. And so it's going to load. And then you'll see right up at the top here, they have this new version called Trust No One. So something that's really cool about GimKit is they just released this forever mode option where they have a bunch of new versions. It used to only be you can play classic and team mode, but now they have forever mode. So all of these versions were really popular releases that they had done previously. And now they're making them forever instead of limited time offers, which is great. And they have actually announced that they will make the Trust No One version a permanent forever mode starting February of 2021, which is awesome. So I'm really excited about that because I do not want this to go away. My kids are obsessed with it and it's a really great way to keep them engaged in the classroom, especially during such a difficult time. So when you are ready to play, you're going to go ahead and you're going to click the trust no one up here at the top. And when you do it the first time, it will actually have a little explanation with a blog post that goes into the different features and how you can actually play. So if for any reason I don't cover a piece in here in my game, or excuse me, in my tutorial and what you can play in the game, you can always go and read the blog post that was written by the GimKit people, which goes into detail of the can and cannots of this game feature. But when you do open it up, you can see there's configuration options. So the first is the number of imposters. So if you don't already know the premise of Among Us, basically what it is, is the original game is that the students are, it's an online game where kids can go in as a little crewmate or an imposter on this like ship. And the objective is, is to figure out who the imposters are and vote them off the ship. In the real game, the imposters go around and they kill players, <laughs> but this is a lot more school appropriate um, in just that the imposters are just people who are stealing your research in this version. Um, so when students enter the game, they will find out if they are either a crewmate, which is like a normal person on the ship, or if they are an imposter. So the first thing you can choose is how many imposters are in the game. So this is great because you can add more imposters to make it harder for the students. You can, um, you know, make less if you want the game to go easier and faster, things like that. The next is the number of investigations per crewmate. So the way that the crewmates can kick the imposters out of the ship and figure out who they are is they have to run investigations. So in a normal gim kit, the students, when they answer the questions, either win money to get power or they lose money if they get the questions wrong. In this option, the students don't gain money. They gain this like electricity or power bolts, which allow them to do different tasks. And one of them is running investigations so they can investigate the other crewmates. So this right here adjusts how many investigations they can have per game. So 10 is the standard that they run at the beginning. So I find that 10 usually ends up being fine. Um, you can decrease it if you want it to be harder for them so they have less chances to look at each other's stuff. Or you can increase them if you want the game to be easier and again, go faster. Then we have investigation reliability. So when they run an investigation on another student, it will either come back as clear, which means that the person should be their crewmate and is not an imposter, or it will come up as inconclusive. So the thing is, is that if someone comes up as clear, it typically does mean that they are a crewmate. However, 
The imposters also are gaining power and money, which allows them to try and conceal themselves and not be found. And one of the ways they can do that is they can buy clear. So they can buy it so that if people investigate them, they appear as clear and would seem as a crewmate, even if they aren't. You can also, sometimes it also runs it and says inconclusive. So inconclusive typically means it might be an imposter, but sometimes random people, even crewmates, come up as inconclusive. So this allows you to adjust how reliable those investigations are. So if you click and say almost perfect, that means when I run an investigation on a crewmate, if it says clear, it's like pretty guaranteed that person's just a crewmate and an imposter. So, and then if you go all the way down to not even worth it, it's going to pretty much run everybody as inconclusive, <laughs> whether they are a crewmate or they're an imposter. So this is another way you can adjust the game and make it harder for your students or easier depending on the level that they need, depending on how long you want the task to run, like the activity, because this is definitely a longer version than normal game kit. Normal game kit is nice because you can control how long it runs. This game is really all about the speed of the student's understanding of the topic and about how like quickly they move through and like try and find the imposter. Because I've had kids who like figured out who the imposter was super fast and the game went quick. And then I've had games where it went on for like 35 minutes because the kids were just like, you know, really moving through the motions and couldn't figure it out. The next part is public investigations. So there is an option when they're going to choose that power where they can do investigations. If they pay a little extra more power, they can do public investigations. So a public investigation has the potential to clear someone on the leaderboard and show everyone in the entire game that someone is marked officially 100% as clear. They are definitely not the imposter and their name like shows up as green. So that could be really pow powerful for the students to help them work better as a team and root out who is and is not a crewmate or an imposter. So again, if you would like the game to be more difficult, you can turn off the public investigations because then they only know personally who they investigated and they have to compare their notes in a way. The next is student called meetings. So the students have to discuss and vote people off and they only have so many meetings per game. We don't have the ability to choose how many meetings. The meetings is increased or decreased depending on how many imposters you put in the game. So I'm pretty sure if you have two imposters, they get five meetings per game to try and figure out and vote people off. And then if you move to three, I think it does six. So it, it adjusts the number of meetings they get to try and solve and like pick people out and hoping that they are the imposter. So you can have students call the meeting so that when they feel they're prepared, they have the opportunity to use their power and pay to call a meeting as a group and say, okay, who do we think is the right person? Who is the person we're going to vote out? Or you can turn that off so that only you, the teacher, can call the meetings. If you have student call meetings, you as the teacher can also call a meeting at any point. So it's not like you can control the meetings if you don't want to. And you can also, as the teacher, end it at any time. You can end the game and make the imposters win at any time, which is kind of funny. Um, so that is all up to you and how well you think your students can run the game by themselves. I teach high schoolers. They run it completely themselves. Occasionally, I will call a meeting myself if I feel like they're taking too long and I want the game to move a little faster. Um, but again, I, I think that they're totally fine to run it by themselves. The next option is answer check. So this is so that when students are playing the game, if they get it wrong, they can see the correct answer afterwards and then move on to the next question. If you have this off, the students don't know what the correct answer is. It just tells them that it's wrong and then they have to keep trying again for other questions and hopefully they'll come back to that one depending on how long they play. Um, music is self-explanatory and then join in late. Players can join in after the game starts. Um, this depends on you know the level of your students again as well. Um, this could be something that may be a little bad. If you have the join and lane option, students could potentially open up another window and join as another player and there could be too many players. You could have people join in um, with inappropriate names potentially. Um, so I guess just you know base it off of the maturity level of your students and how much you trust them to work this on their own. Um, but overall, I keep this on, I think it's fine. So those are all of the settings that are available on your end. So that, I'm actually going to start the game exactly as the default settings are, which is, I think this is also on for default settings. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue. And we're going to create a game. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like when the game is actually running. 
So we are back. I have joined the game four different times and marked myself as player one, two, three, four, just to show you. You do need at least four people to play this game. So this is what it looks like on the teacher end, just like a normal game kit, ready to play. And then on the student end, it gives you a little bit of an introduction. It says ready for liftoff. Crewmates run investigations to collect evidence. Students can, again, run investigations that are private where they can only see if the person is clear or inconclusive. They can run public if you let them, which would be that they can publicly announce if someone is clear. And then the last one is you can um, peek at other people's notes. So when you are running investigations, people, you get to see if they are clear or if they are inconclusive. And then if I run um, to see someone else's notes, I could look at player two's notes on what they did and see if they found someone else as inconclusive as well. That can also be helpful because um, imposters are not a normal crewmate, so they're not investigating other people. So if I look at someone's notes and it says that they have not run any investigations, that might mean that they're the imposter. But again, they can pay for fake investigations and stuff. So there's a complete balance of ways um, in which they can conceal themselves with their imposters or try and find the imposters if they're a crewmate. Um, again, imposters have to sabotage the crewmate investigations and blend in, try not to get voted off. So they are also trying to, you know, make other people's investigations go poorly. And then um, when they go in, they will be able to see if they are a crewmate or an imposter. And it says they can draw while they are waiting. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game. All right. So I'm going to start the game. And so as the teacher... It will have these little like instructions, which is cute. And again, this is because this is how the game runs for the real imposter. And the students, if they are on their screens, it will say, look at your captain's screen for instructions. So they know to look at what you're sharing um, to make sure that they know what's going on. So it's time they need to project the research. It says we need to inject the imposters. It says they need to run investigations and then call a meeting. And that's when the students discuss. And it's just a really cute intro. The kids love it. And then the full game starts. Um, so then you can see that there are two imposters that are left. They have two meetings left to try and find out who it is. And there's 40 investigations left. And again, that's because there's four players and there's 10 per player, which again was all in the settings. Over here on the left hand side, you can see this is where you as a teacher can call a meeting at any point. You can end the game early so that way um, the imposters win. And again, the game code is down here so that you have students enter in late because that's how you have to start the situation. And then as a student, you will be able to start running investigations. So let's answer some questions and try and run some investigations. All right, so this person who entered the game, we can now see is an imposter. So their instructions are visit Mission Control, um, which is kind of like the Gim Kit store, uh, to decre decrease the number of investigations crewmates can have and blend in by running fake investigations or putting on a disguise. So the first thing they need to do is they need to be able to answer the questions. Um, so my students are currently working on Predator versus Imperfect. Um, so then you're going to type in this answer. Again, this is be based on how you format your questions in your class. Um, I do a mix of multiple choice and fill in the blank. So now I got it right. So I'm going to do more just so we can see. Um, And all right, so when you feel you have enough power up here in the top hand corner, you can kind of see I have four. I'm going to go to mission control, and that is where I can control and buy things with my power. So the first thing is, is uh, for 10 lightning bolts, I can um, do investigation remover. So I can decrease the number of investigations that people have by two. So that helps them to have less opportunities to investigate me and find me out as a inconclusive imposter. You can do six lightning bolts as a fake investigation. This is if people look at your notes to be able to see that you ran investigations, which makes you blend in with the crewmates because that's what they're doing. Um, you can buy for 15 power bolts unclear, which means prevent a crewmate from even appearing on the clear list um, from ever appearing. So you can make it so that 
someone else can't be cleared. So that way they seem like they're the imposter because they keep coming up as inconclusive. And the last one for another 15 power bullets is disguise. Um, so appear as a crewmate the next time someone runs an investigation on you. So instead of coming up as inconclusive, you would come up as clear, which would make people think that you are not someone they have to worry about. So that is what it looks like to be a imposter. So now I'm gonna run you guys and show you what it looks like to be a crewmate. All right, so now we are a crewmate. So as a crewmate, it says there are two imposters on board, find and vote them out, run investigations and mission control to rule out fellow crewmates, use your notebook to keep track of your suspicions to find out who you had run as clear or inconclusive, call a meeting when you're ready to vote someone out. So they have the same opportunity that they are writing questions. I do no accents on mine. Okay, of course, now I got that wrong. <laughs> Um, so I do know ask accents when my students are doing fill in the blank on here just because um, it's harder for them. A lot of them do it on their computer and so it's just easier to not have it because many of them don't know how to change the uh, language setting on their controls. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Mission Control and I'm going to see here are the options that I have. So I can do a private investigation for seven lightning bolts, which again, allows me to privately look and check someone out and see if they're clear and conclusive. A public, which can probably clear someone in the green list. A note look, which I can take a look at someone else's notes to see if they are doing anything, if they're running investigations or potentially looking suspicious. And again, that could just be that person is not doing well in the game, so they can't afford to do investigations, but it's an opportunity to look. And then lastly, it's 10 lightning bolts to call a meeting and vote someone out. So I'm going to run some investigations and have you guys take a look at what that looks like. All right, so our players have been playing a little bit. So as you can see in the investigation log, as students are investigating one another, it shows up on the screen that they investigated, but not how it came out. This is to help you see like maybe who's not active and should be and could potentially be the imposter. If they are publicly cleared, their name will appear over here on the left-hand side in green, and the students will all be able to see that on their voting list as well as who is marked as completely like clear and in, like if they're on the clear list, they cannot be an imposter, okay? So now I maybe feel like I'm ready as a crewmate and I want to call a meeting because I think I know who it is. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna pay my 10 power and I'm gonna say, okay, let's start a meeting. So on the teacher side, it says, okay, discussion time, who is the imposter? So this is when the students can discuss and talk. You can choose, have students do it like in the chat if you're like in a Google Meet or a Zoom. I have the students just let them unmute because honestly, it's so much fun to have them just like argue at each other and they're like, oh, so-and-so is really sus and all this stuff, they're so funny. So. They chit chat, they decide who they all wanna vote on collectively, and then they decide who they wanna vote on. And when they're ready, you as the teacher have to click start voting. And then they have to vote which player they think it is. So I'm gonna vote for player one. And then as a teacher, if people aren't voting or there's not enough or whatever it may be, you can end the voting early. And then it does a little message on the screen. And so you can say, okay, player one was who everyone voted off. And then it says player one was an imposter. <laughs> and this is like a big dramatic reveal where it'll say not imposter, not imposter. And the kids like all freak out and it's just such a fun time. And again, as I said, if I like, I'm like, okay, class is over. We got to call it, whatever it may be. Um, end the game early. Or if for example, they call one more meeting and they don't figure out the other imposter, it will immediately end the game and say that they lost because they don't have enough meetings left to find out who the imposters are. So when you end the game, it says the imposters win and it tells you who the imposters were. Or if the student, the crewmates win, the same thing will happen except it'll say crewmates win. And again, it'll reveal the name of the imposters. Um, so it is super fun, super engaging. The kids absolutely love it. I can't recommend it enough. If you have any questions or anything you want further answered, feel free to write it down below. If this video was helpful for you, please make sure you subscribe and you like this video and share it with a friend. Um, thank you so much. Come back again for my next teacher tip tutorial and work smart and not harder people.